In today's video, we played Minecraft for 300 days. Well, kind of. It's a carry-on from my previous two videos, so watch those to get up to speed. Now, this isn't hardcore mode, as I'm kind of bad at Minecraft, so expect some hilarious deaths. And if you're looking for pro Minecraft content, you've come to the wrong place. But if you haven't, then please subscribe, as these videos take a, a long time to record. Now, I'll start the video if you say the magic word. Please? No, I meant Jeremy. So on day 201, it was time to get serious. Our storage system is terrible, so we need to fix that ASAP by making an iron farm. I know exactly what you are thinking. An iron farm? That calls for a dance break. Wow, a dance break so early? Joel, you're amazing, I know. But we're actually making this iron farm, right? Because I want to make an automatic storage system. To make an automatic storage system, you need a lot of hoppers. And to make a lot of hoppers, you need a lot of iron. Do you get where I'm going here? So I decided to build this iron farm in the sky, and as you can see, we already had some mishaps. I didn't use warped fences, which meant that lava just spilt everywhere. But this is a peaceful iron farm that doesn't require zombies. However, it does require villagers like every other iron farm, which is why we're building this ridiculous staircase here, which we're going to need a lot of rails for. You see me breaking into my gold trophy supply here to make some powered rails. And I kind of underestimated how many powered rails this would take. I kept sending my mine carts up. They kept coming straight back down because I didn't have enough powered rails so I had to keep making more powered rails. It was a lot of powered rails. I've said powered rails way too much now but I ended up spending most of my gold here which made me think should I have made a gold farm first instead? That would have been a very long process but eventually success. The minecart landed on the beds exactly where I wanted it to. I then had to go and get some villagers and after linking up this path here I sent them on their way. We only need two although technically we want five up there but once we get two we can just breed them which is exactly what I did while they stared me in the eyes as they bred, which is honestly kind of creepy, but they eventually gave me a little burger villager. I call them that because they look like burgers. And do you know what also is fun? Killing chickens. So I did that for a bit. I was also streaming at the time, and here is a cute little family shot of everyone in our household. But you don't care about that. You care about Minecraft, and our iron farm is now fully functional once those villagers get breeding. But we want to make it look pretty. So I went and got some cacti. I went and got some glass. I went and got some more sand for more glass. And then I got making this tunnel leading up to the iron farm as I don't want to have to go all the way up there every time I want to get iron no 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 we're gonna make the iron drop down as the scaffolding is doing here and collect it at the bottom so we needed to clear out a load of space at the bottom so we could have some chest system sort of thing to collect all our iron and of course a path leading up to the chest system I also dyed my sheep here in my wool farm cyan you'll see why later but as you can hear here the iron farm is working and we got working on a way of dispensing this into the tube so it would head down and we can collect it at the bottom and as you can see here it is working wonderfully look at the cobblestone go so all i had to do now is connect up these two hoppers and as you can see the iron is falling down into our chest collection system at the bottom. Now it is practical, but it is also very ugly. So it's time we change that, starting out by making some concrete, which is the first time I've actually made concrete in this world. I also headed to the nether to gather some shroom lights, as I'm going to be using those, as well as some blackstone as well. I said hi to Halfway Harry as I was on my way to get some gunpowder as my rocket supply was getting low. And then we got working on the spaceship. Now, this first attempt went terribly. As you can see, an iron golem actually spawns on it, which means I've done this wrong. So I was like, you know what? I'll kill this iron golem and um, he killed me. Yeah. And then of course I didn't have a bed set, so I was back at spawn. So I spent the next day just thinking to myself, how am I this much of an idiot? How have I done this multiple times now? But we eventually made it home, gathered up all our stuff, which was a bit of a pain as it was spread out in the jungle. And then we finally almost <laughs> died again, but killed the iron golem. Whoa. And then we dismantled our spaceship and got building it again. This time correctly, as you can see here, is looking very spaceship -y. You can see the stream light being used there as well. And it really finishes off the look. And I'm very happy with how this turned out. It looks awesome from down here. But the collection system doesn't look awesome. So I was actually live streaming at the time and my wife made a poll on my Twitch channel saying that I had to build this. And this is something that I built in a video recently. I never thought I'd want to build this again, but I had to. And it's hideous. But look, we got the iron going straight into his ugly brain. I then found some coordinates from the first 100 days video where I had this zombie spawner. I gathered materials and I went and did this sick MLG water bucket trick and then got clearing out this as we're going to be making an XP farm as it's about time. We've only been playing this world for 200 
120 days. A pretty standard design that I've built many times before. Basically, you send the zombies up, they come down, they take some fall damage, and then you can just one hit them, and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Also, I don't utilize this as much as I could, but you can use kelp to make sure that you can get some source water blocks so it makes it really easy to make these sort of water elevators. And yep, yeah, that'll kill a zombie, I'm pretty sure. So I took out all the torches and the zombies started spawning in and look at this lovely, lovely XP. But I wanted to make this area look a bit nicer as we're probably gonna be spending some time here. Also, when I dug up, it was in the middle of a farm, so I changed that pretty soon on. So we got two little holes here, one to take us up and one to take us down. And to decorate this place, I used some like sort of zombie colors. I used like some warped wood and I also used some like green as well as I just thought. It looked quite nice. And here we've got another water elevator finished, meaning we can get all the way up to the surface. Lovely. I then gathered a load more materials for the decoration of this thing. I'm spending a lot of time on this. I just want it to look nice. Okay. But we're using a weird mix of blocks, but I think it ended up looking all right. You'll see in a second here how it actually looks. Oh, and I was also killing zombies and fixing my tools at the same time, which is why we built this thing in the first place. And after finishing off the ceiling with this dark oak wood, I added in some chest to store the excess rotten flesh or armor and also a grindstone because then I can disenchant stuff for that little bit of extra XP. I then spent like a couple of days really just fixing all my tools up etc before finally heading into the nether as I was looking for this biome with all the basalt and that actually gave us an achievement as well. I gathered up a load of basalt as well as some blackstone as we were going to be using this for something very important and that thing is that's right our chest system. We started clearing out a load of space. Like seriously, we're gonna be using this whole upper section of this jungle here. We're probably gonna build our base around this at some point, but for now, we wanna get the storage system set up and working first. And that basalt I collected was for the floor here, and I think it looks rather cool. And this is a big project that requires a lot of materials. One of those materials being dark oak wood, not for any use actually, just for decoration. I then turned all the jungle wood into chests and started making the first layer. However, I got bored and decided you know what? It's time we went and got a trident because I've just never really got a trident really. So I thought now is the time and this guy attacked me. And I was like, yes, fella, give me your trident. However, it was a bit of a tense battle. I tried to escape with the rockets, but now he killed me. Another needless death. Thank goodness this isn't hardcore. This would be very, very embarrassing. But I managed to go get all my stuff while still getting attacked. But I got it all pretty safely without dying. And after a bit of flying around, we made it all the way home where we quickly slept. As I wanted to get back out there and start looking for some tridents again. However, my elytra just like started breaking both of them. And um, yeah, I, I had to make a boat out of the trees here and boat all the way home. Which, which took a while. But I got some fish on the way while I was getting attacked by this trident dude. Killed him. He didn't give me a trident, so I just kind of gave up on that for a little bit. And instead went and fixed my elytra in our new XP farm. On day 33, I was like, you know what? No, that trident is going to be mine. So I went and got an unbreaking free enchantment from this villager here. And I've ran out of potions, so I went to get some potions of weakness. And I splashed it on him. And then I realized, oh, he's not a zombie yet. So I just contemplated life for a little bit. But after that, I got back to work, converted him, and then changed him properly this time with a golden apple, and then got working on the other villager, which I wanted Depth Strider. And I managed to get this Depth Strider 2 buck, converted him as well, and then got transporting them over to our villager section, which went really smoothly. Nothing weird happened or frustrating happened whatsoever. I mean, this is perfectly fine. I love this. <laughs> I added the Unbreaking Free Enchantment to my Elytra and got the other Depth Strider villager in his place as well. Bought two books off him as we we're going to combine them into one book and add them to my boots, which are now called Bean Swinnies instead of Bean Booties. And I went hunting for a trident and look, we got one. The next trident villager we killed, we got one. I was so happy. I went home, put a mending book on it, called it Aqua Boy for some reason, and then I traded with some villagers and actually managed to get it up to full from mending. Happy with what I've achieved, I spent the rest of day 237 chopping a load of trees as we're going to be needing a lot of hoppers and that's exactly what I made. I also named this fish here Debbie and put it in my pool but that's irrelevant as we're making more hoppers, that's right. Also, this wandering villager actually had a trade I needed for him, so I bought some packed ice off him. What a lovely fella. I chopped some more spruce trees as we're going to be needing some spruce stairs for our build here and got working on the second layer of our storage system. Now, I decided to just do this little section for now as the entire thing is going to take quite a while. But I wanted to get this bit up and running so I could show you how it works. And the design I've got at the moment is pretty basic, but I think it's quite tidy. I then went and got a load of quartz as we're going to be needing to make some redstone comparators for this sorting system, as well as 
are some redstone repeaters, and this uses a lot of redstone. In fact, I've basically ran out of redstone at this point, which is not good. But hey, you know what that means. We get to go mining at some point. Everyone loves good mining stuff, yes. And this is also where the packed ice comes into play. I made a load more hoppers and got working on this section of the chest system as well. Made all the redstone comparators and repeaters I needed, and we finished off these two sections here. We then headed to the nether as we needed some warped wood to make some warped trapped doors, as that's right, we're going to be making this look quite interesting. I'm making a sort of automatic dispensing system here, but I've put a bit of soul sand next to it as we're going to make these items transfer up into our storage system in a really fun way. You'll see here, the cobblestone pops out from this chest here, and this is where the warp trap doors come in because we're going to have a sort of pipe leading them into the chest, and we're going to be using the power of water to do this, and you'll see here the kelp goes in, and then it comes out up here, and now all we need to do is link this up. So you'll never guess what I did on day 44. That's right, I linked it up. I told you you'd never guess. Now I don't know why I'm building a chest system this big. Honestly, this is a lot of work. It's going to take a long time and a lot of hoppers to finish this thing off as it's got two layers and we also needed a lot of ice. So we went looking for ice and found ice, which I swiftly converted into packed ice. I even made the pool bigger so I could get more ice. And for some reason I was like, we don't need the chest yet. Let's just make the whole water system. So I did. I made the whole water system. I say the whole water system. I actually only made the top layer. We're going to need two layers of water system. I once again took a break and set my spawn here because that's right, we're heading back to the end. As I had left the ender dragon egg behind, so I was like, yoink, my egg now. However, you have to do it this way with the torch underneath it. And there we go. We have the egg. So I took it home and I placed it lovely on this barrel here. Look how lovely it looks. Now, the mountain I was collecting ice on was terrible, so I headed out and found this biome and went crazy on the ice. I also met this lovely polar bear who I swiftly killed and ate his salmon because I wanted to. Here's a little clip of me being excited that my elytra is not breaking. Notice how I've said elytra and elytra in this video. I just want to anger everybody. But anyway, we added in some more pipes. We added in some more water as that's right. We needed to finish this second layer. So on day 50 and 51, I just went ham and I just started adding in water everywhere and we got it completed. It's now complete. All we need is chest and lots more hoppers, like seriously lots more hoppers. Here I did some deforestation because I hate trees. Just kidding, I actually like trees. But look at all this wood that I got from all these dead trees. I converted the dead trees into some lovely chests where I'm going to store probably more dead trees in the future. And after placing down a little platform for them to go on, I got placing in all these chests. I placed in a lot of chests here. I don't think you realize how many chests are here because there is a lot of chests. You can see how many chests I'm making here. And I kept having to go back and make more chests. But finally, we placed the final chest and now all our sorting system is not complete, but it has all the chests. So I celebrated by swiping my sword, but then it was still looking ugly. So I decided to fix that and make it look a bit nicer by adding in these bits here. With the finishing part being some spruce stairs, obviously this is going to have a roof and everything on it in the future. But for now, this is going to be as neat as it looks for a while. Or will I change it a bit later? Guess you'll have to keep watching to find out. But you know what happened? These guys spawned and I was like, yeah. You know what? I fancy a raid, made some golden apples and decided to kill them. However, killed a, a lot of sheep by accident as well. But eventually the raid began and the raiders started coming in. And I was like, yeah, I've got max tools. This will be easy. This will be so easy. And then I died. So, uh, yeah, and, and I actually died twice unfortunately. So I slept because I was just like, you know what? I need to do this in the daytime. And then we got actually killing the raiders. Uh, had a few close calls, especially with these blooming ravagers, which I honestly quite hate, especially as I decided to do this raid without really having a bow. So I just had to use all the crossbows that I picked up, which were all kind of broken, but I used them and they were actually quite useful because to be honest, I probably would have died a lot more times. But look, oh no, they attacked halfway Harry. So I went in to save him. However, when I got there, he, he was dead. We lost halfway Harry. This is the worst thing that's happened. Why did I decide to do a raid at my own base? A terrible idea, to be honest. And yeah, we did start this on day 55 and now we're on day 57. But you know what? Raids are hard, okay? They're hard. Look, this Ravager nearly killed me again. And then this one destroyed my tree. I hate these things. But finally, we killed the final Raider. And we got the Hero of the Village achievement. And the little buff it gives you as well, as you can see in the right-hand corner. I celebrated by making this shield and taking advantage of the cheap trades. I also killed some chickens to celebrate. Oh, isn't that lovely? However, I did lose my life. 
elytra in the raid, so I had to make a whole new elytra, which is a bit of a shame, but I decided to celebrate by going to the nether the next day, as I was feeling very confident and I wanted to take on a bastion now. I killed this piglin child because it deserved it, and then I killed all the brutes, etc, and we managed to get another achievement as we raided the chests here. Plus got some gilded blackstone, which is one of my favourite blocks in the game. We then headed home, and this is why we need their story system, look at that chest, but we made a gravestone for our beloved halfway Harry, and then we gave him the free swipe salute and then moved on which was making some more hoppers i've made so many hoppers over this video that i'm actually starting to hate hoppers but i also took advantage of the hero of the village to get some new farmer villagers which was a lot easier as we didn't have to trade as many carrots with these guys i went to some more farmers to get some more pumpkin and melon trades and actually both of these villagers were pumpkin and melon boys which means we can get some maximum trades from these guys and as you saw from that clip earlier we're not short on pumpkins and melons all right we're just getting so many emeralds so many xp now it's worth Wonderful. In fact, I added some emerald blocks to my pyramid and then I decided, you know what, we've not got enough iron here. Let's destroy our pyramid and do something we've not done yet, which is start a mega mine. No, not the blue guy from the movie. I said mine. And if you haven't done this before, this is very satisfying. What you do is you make a beacon underground and then you use the haste two powers to super mine. Look how quick it goes. However, we're going to be getting a lot of materials here. So I had to go get some chests first and then we got set out. We spent a couple of days just mining out this area. Very satisfying to do because you just swipe in and just blocks are just disintegrating. It's lovely. And what did we get from it? All this. Just a load of cobblestone. Just kidding. We also got all this as well. A load of redstone, a load of coal, a load of iron, a load of diamonds as well. We had 29 in our inventory, but we also mined there. So we had just over a stack. For some reason, I don't really use my XP farm often. Instead, I just trade with villagers, and that seems to fix my tools more quickly. However, I did want to fix my pickaxe a bit more, so I traded with them a bit there. During the raid, I'd right-clicked my Ender Dragon by accident, so I picked it up again and put it back in its place and told it off. And then finally, we got adding some items to our chest system. We had to make these filler blocks here, and then we could finally start working on the different blocks in each hopper. I started labeling the chests, I started putting in some more items, etc. And look, it works. I put the dark oak slabs in here and the dark oak planks. Then you see them come up here and then they're heading into the item sorter right there. And this excited me quite a lot because it was finally working. We were finally getting to the late stage of this. Yes, the bottom floor still needs a load of hoppers, but we're inching ever closer. And there's actually a few items we don't have to put in our old storage system anymore. It's beautiful. I started out with the dark oak because we've just been using a lot of dark oak. And then I decided, you know what? Let's go chop some trees down. So I chopped some trees down and more trees. Then I didn't chop trees. And then I chopped some spruce trees. And then I went and placed these tree logs on this bit here. And then I stripped these logs. And that is that. Looking a bit neater and tidier, but we want to change that a bit more with some warped wood as we decide to make this nice little entrance here, which is just a bit of a teaser of the interior to come. I still have to design it all. It's going to take a while, but look how neat and tidy everything's looking. I'm so happy with this place. I just can't wait for it to have like a full building over it, which we're obviously not going to be able to get done today, probably. However, I took a little break to do some trading to get some XP points, and we got enough to enchant our trident, which got loyalty free on it, which is not bad, but not amazing. I found my turtle had escaped which made me sad i tried to lead him back but it doesn't work and then i used my trident because i wanted to use it and look how fun it is to kill these squids here. i honestly think trident's one of the most fun tools however after my turtle escaped i realized i need more pets so we went in search of some foxes and i found one sitting on this tree that was all curled up and asleep it was very cute but look its whole family was here so i stole this one from its family they just ran off instantly and abandoned it but you know what this is my fox now and i love her i think she's amazing and I was overjoyed to get her home because last time I had a disaster where my fox was killed by a wolf and I decided to give her a name tag instantly. And you know what we're going to call her? That's right, Angelina Jolie. I decided to make a hole for my fox to live in or you could call it a pit. And you know what? This pit is kind of radical. You could say it's a rad pit. I thought I'd leave a few seconds there for that to sink in. But anyway, we decorated this pit like a sort of tiger biome and then we led Angelina Jolie into the rad pit, which she seemed to like at first, but maybe they'll grow apart over time. Anyway, she looks very cute in there. She looks pretty happy. She's got a bit of dirt in her mouth. So I decided to give her a treat. That treat, some chickens, which she soon hunted down. It was great fun to watch. I loved watching all these chickens die. I decided to celebrate by making more hoppers because our iron farmer had spat out some more iron. I also made a new anvil as I'd broken my previous one. I 
And we got quite far with these hoppers. I think we've actually completed every top row one now. And on day 74, I decided to add some more of the automatic sourcing system in, which required a lot of all this redstone stuff here, which you see me make before. It's literally the same pattern over and over again. But we actually finished all of the top row, which is awesome. So I decided to get some leather to celebrate. I bred up my cows there and then I went and killed some horses because horses drop a lot of leather. Also, I just love how they scream. I killed a cow as well, but then I just killed more horses. I felt pretty bad after just killing the entirety of this baby horse's family and he won't give me leather, but you know what? I'll just kill him anyway. It's just fun, isn't it? I then came back and killed my cows as well. Wow, I'm just on a murder spree. But their leather went to good use as we put some item frames on our storage system. And then I spent the next five days, yes, that's right, five days, just sorting out the filters, adding on some more redstone, etc. It took a long time, but these things do take a long time in like the end game of Minecraft. And we've actually got quite a lot of filters now, as you'll see here. You can see them all around the room. We've got coal, we've got iron, we've got a load of words, never stuff, etc. The item system is truly starting to come together finally. So I decided to update my map over here. As you can see now there's a big black blob where our sorting system is. And then I set out to achieve one of the goals I'd set myself. The biggest flex in Minecraft, in my opinion. I started a new strip mine in the nether as my old one was just a massive maze of lava, etc. And yes, that's right. We are looking to get some ancient debris and we managed to get four in total here, which is perfect. All we need for our, our netherite ingot. Now I say this is the biggest flex. There's one bigger flex, which is a netherite block. But I'd say this is just... You know making something for the point of making something we made ourselves an enchanted diamond hoe and then yes we made a neverite hoe completing the serious dedication achievement and i decided to flex this achievement on some wither skeletons that's right we're back here we killed 230 wither skeletons and then we killed some more wither skeletons lots more wither skeletons we managed to get a skull kind of early on and then our luck returned however that was quite funny watching that one fall off the edge killed a blaze there but no more wither skeletons until finally you guessed it we we ran out of food, so we had to head back home and buy some more golden carrots. However, I remembered in this chest, I actually had a wither skeleton skull, so I only need one more now. We managed to get it when we got back pretty early on, which means, yes, we're going to kill the wither again. So I made myself a bow and enchanted it because we had lots of enchantment points. That enchantment was trash, so I gave us a new enchantment with power free, which is not so trash. I then organized my inventory and went down into my strip mine where I spawned the wither. And this fight went a lot smoother than the last one. I just killed him with quite a lot of ease. He did wither me here, but you know what? What do you expect? It, it's the wither. He's gonna wither you. But the bow was really powerful. Our sword was really powerful. We melted through this fella. And we got ourselves that beloved wither star. As we are going to be doubling up our beacon. So I crafted ourselves a new beacon after sleeping there. And we went and mined all our emerald blocks from our beacon down in the cave. And reassembled it up here by our base. However, we've done it as a double beacon now. Meaning we can have haste to and strength to. Which means we needed something to test it out. And unfortunately, this wandering trader was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So his llamas, I just killed them all. I named the fish he gave me, though, Beacon Barry and set him free in my little pond here. Look at him swim. I then dyed our beacons green because it looks cool. Gathered some more iron and then we got, like, you know, just working on the storage system again. I actually had to go and gather a load more wood, make a load more hoppers. And then we just placed the hoppers. What are you expecting? But I did move over my tools here now because we're going to have this as our main area. I added silk touch to our neverite hoe as we're going to be using this to collect leaves. It does actually have a use now. I remember when you made a diamond hoe just to flex, but now, no, they actually have a use to get leaves, etc. I noticed at night that our chest system was looking rather dark and this came into fruition as a creeper spawned really close on and we nearly had a very close call there. But thanks to our strength too, we killed it with ease and we got working on adding in some more filters. We've moved on to the bottom row now, finally, and we can start adding in more blocks into this area. Did have a slight problem though here as the leaves were just being spat out. So just had to, you know, like place a block to stop that happening as that's a not intentional, surprisingly. But look at them all go. The blocks, they're going down there, down even further to the bottom row. It's all working out. I love it. I love automation. It's so fun. So fun, in fact, that I decided to start bringing all the stuff from my chests over and putting them in our storage system, which was easy. I just plop them in there. For the rest of 290, I fixed our farm, the raiders destroyed it. And then on 291, we got adding some grass around our area. However, uh, this happened while I was doing so. 
Yep, uh, another death. Good, good. This one tried to get me again, but luckily I was too quick this time. But here you can see a little time lapse where I'm adding on, you know, some redstone bits, some grass around the edge, chopping down the trees, etc. We're just trying to make this area a bit more accessible as at the moment it was a bit of a pain. And then I lit it up as well. We don't want any more creepers sneaking up on us. Thank you very much. Now, I don't know what came over me at this point, but I thought, you know what? It's time to go back to the end. And we're not just going to the end to kill some shulkers, etc. Oh, no, no. We're going to kill some endermen. And then we're going to use their ender pearls to make some eye of enders. And we're going to craft them into end crystals as we are resummoning the ender dragon. The first time I've ever done this ever, I thought I'd give it a go. I've never killed the ender dragon while having an elytra and rockets. And I thought it could be quite fun. And it was. I flew around shooting all the end crystals and I was having a great time. I collected some of the dragon's breath because I was just in, shot some more pillars, and then this happened. Yeah, I, I died. And I was like, oh, right. This this hasn't gone very well. I've died again. Collected all my stuff, though, and I was ready to fight it. And yeah, I died again. And I just like was getting angry at this point. Went back, got all my stuff once more. Got my inventory sorted out. Ender Dragon, it's time to die. That's right. She hit me in the air again. I was prepared this time. I flew down with my elytra and looked two endermen in the eye and got down to half a heart and di died, died again. Took a moment to reflect on how stupid I am, th then headed back. And uh, yeah, this time we, we, we managed to collect all our stuff again. And uh, we actually just, yeah, started hitting her out of anger. I couldn't be bothered shooting her with a bow. That's merciful. No, instead, I hit her with my sword. And then to finish her off, I hit her with a crafting table. Look at you, Ender Dragon. I'm mocking you. You're useless. You're weak. Now give me all your juicy XP. Oh, it only gives 14 XP. Why did I even do this? What was the point? Oh yeah, that's right. I was going to go through the new portal it spawned and find some more end cities as we wanted to finish off the achievements in the end. And there's only one more we had to get. It was this great view from up here and I just let these shulker things hit me all the way up to 50 feet where we managed to get ourselves the achievement. It took quite a while, but we did it. Look at it. Lovely. And then on day 95, we went and looted this end ship here as this was one of the other reasons we're here to get back our spare elytra as we had lost our previous one in that raid earlier. So I also took the end of Dragon head killed this Enderman and we headed home where we were very happy to see daylight again. Put our spare elytra in its slot, added our Ender Dragon head on here, and then made some more hoppers because we're going to be making the chest system. Just kidding, we're getting some rails. Why is he getting rails, Joel? Also, furnaces? Whatever could this be? Well, you probably figured it out by now. We're making a super smelter. It's about time. I kept having to use those old furnaces in our place, and this one here, when surrounded by building, is going to be glorious. I added all these hoppers on, added the rails. A very simple design. I'll put the design I stole it from in the description because I did not come up with this and look at it go. Oh, we left some rails in the hoppers, but then we got it working and we got lots and lots of stone very, very quickly, meaning we could make more comparators and more repeaters and finish off our storage system. So we spent the next couple of days working on that as well as adding in all the filters. And then by day 299, we managed to have completed a lot of this thing. We got basically the whole of the bottom row up to a certain point complete. Had to go to the nether to gather some resources to add into the filters. But apart from that, it's looking rather good. All we need now is some more item frames. However, we are on the last day of 299 and the sun is setting. So we just took a moment to reminisce of what we'd done before taking a nice snooze in our bed and finishing off with some chicken killing. It had to be done using the trident as well. I just needed to relax after this stressful 300 days. Had a look at Angelina Jolie and that is it. These are our statistics. 300 days done. I'm pretty happy. I think the next one we're going to do is 500 days, but that's obviously going to take take a while as this one has taken me a week to record and I've got to work on some other stuff as well in between but I will be streaming it on my twitch twitch.tv forward slash smallish beans so come check it out on there but the world is looking good our chest system is nearly finished I can't wait to start building something around this bad boy